Brian, what I can't understand is there seems to be a lot of debate amongst quantum scientists because you have one way of looking things, but uh, the quantum scientist Deepak Chopra seems to be very different to your take on the universe. Why is it that two scientists, you and Deepak Chopra, don't agree with each other? Do you want to give you a sense? Well, you could do. I'm not necessarily, not necessarily. But he's, well, well, what is it, like, because, you know, uh, quantum consciousness, right? That's what he's on about, isn't it? It's this, what is it that uh, you find, what is it difficult with Deepak's ideas, philosophically or scientifically? See, the thing about quantum theory is that it's the basis of our understanding of the physical world, almost all of it, apart from gravity, which is described by Einstein's theory of general relativity. Everything else is quantum. And it's a very precise, specific theory that tells you how particles move around and interact with each other. Mm. That's basically that's what it does. There are problems. Uh, well, problems... Put out the mind, there were, there were, so, so you can calculate things with the theory, and the calculations work. And that allows you to do things like build transistors, understand how chemical bonds work, and all sorts of things and pretty make predictions for the possibility you'll find the Higgs boson at the LHC for the standard model of particle physics of the quantum theory. So it definitely works and makes predictions that are testable and verifiable. But it has um, features that can be misunderstood very easily. So, for example, it has the description of an electron. Let's say we put an electron in this room. It's quite a big room. And the description. And what is wonderful is, as you said that, it was as if the electron was wildly moving around this room. Spirit. All of the Venetian blinds moved as if the anger of Deepak had come upon yeah, us. That's what I thought it was, the anger yeah. of Deepak. It's a good film. Uh, Charlton Heston. Yeah. Really. I'd yeah. love to see Charlton Heston as Deepak Chopra. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The Ten Commandments of Deepak Chopra. The guru, the diamond encrusted guru. But, um, so, if you put an electron. Deepak Chopra, lust for glory. <laughs> If you put an electron in this room, then the description of it is, is, is a thing called a wave function. It's basically a probability distribution, but a bit more complicated. Now, essentially what it is. So, so, so you put it here, and you don't have a theory that says, well, there's a particle here. There's a particle there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you, you have a, kind of a, a distribution of probabilities that will tell you how likely it is to find the electron in a particular place. Right. And so all the problems with interpretation of quantum mechanics come down to how you interpret that description. Um, and the problem is that it allows for, it sound, it, it's not totally understood, right? This is how science works. So the interpretations of the theory are debatable. Many physicists now think there's, some, there's something called the many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics, which all about to, all the way back to Everett, which is becoming more fashionable, which suggests that actually this ensemble of possibi probabilities or possibilities of your uh, is, is is real, and so we uh, also exist in that state. There are, and, and it's often misrepresented as saying, "Well, every time I look at something, does that mean there's a copy of me looking at that and a copy?" Of me? It's not really that. It's just that we live in this we live in this wave function. So, so, so it's it's tricky to understand that there may be uh, an interesting role. But so some physicists will say that until we understand how we experience the world, we won't really understand how to map this theory onto our experience of the theory and everything. But that's a door through which drivel can uh, see. So there's, it's that. this idea, I mean, what first got you, because I've heard things, that I've heard people say, well, if you're ill, you can make a quantum leap from no. being ill to being well, which no. kind of seems more like the TV series no, Quantum no, no. Leap. W whatever. No, it, th this is the problem. That's what I mean. There's, there's, you it, talk about, I mean, you can talk about, you know, people also use Heisenberg's uncertainty principle to say, well, everything's uncertain. Yeah, science says everything's uncertain, it's yeah. It's not uncertain. It, the uncertainty principle is emerging from the laws, the, the, the basic rules that tell you how particles hop around, what the probability is they'll hop around, how they interact with each other, and it emerges from that. And the uncertainty principle actually emerges in a similar way. There's a similar statement you can make in classical physics with a tuning fork. When you get a tuning fork, you can and catch it very quickly. Then, then you can't tell precisely what the note is. And actually, if you only let it ring for a tiny fraction of a second, you've no chance of telling what the note is. And that's analogous to something called the energy time uncertainty principle, which means that if you, if you, if you, uh, it's, a, it's often represented as saying if you have a particle, then it can borrow some energy from the vacuum for a certain amount of time. And, and the more energy it borrows, the less time you can borrow it for. But that's a similar actual effect. It's, it's a wave effect, basically. So, so there's all sorts of misunderstandings because of the. I think some of it goes back to the initial theory when it was written down in the 20s. It's a difficult theory, um, and it's a counterintuitive theory. It has probability seemingly at the heart of it. So, so where do you? 
so and Deepak, where do you where do you split in your you know at what point you know with your your shared understanding of quantum mechanics where do, where do you find that you and Deepak no longer agree? Um, if I'm being serious, because I think it's a serious problem actually. The, the, the problem is that the the kind of you know you might say well astrology and, and homeopathy and all these things they're kind of harmless aren't they they're kind of well they're not really when, when they feed into a, a when it becomes anti-science what we're talking about so, so when you start saying well okay then so everything's a bit relative and everything's a bit uncertain so i don't really need to vaccinate my child do I? because it's you know and then, so 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 i think there's a serious point to be made which is i i i think it's i get annoyed when people misuse either accidentally or you know, maybe accidentally, but just, just don't really misrepresent the science. Perhaps because they don't understand it. I'm not, there might have been no malice there, but still, I think it's worth challenging.